grew up on a farm in Pennsylvania. Um, I am a farm girl, um, but after I graduated from college, also in South Central Pennsylvania, I moved to Washington, D.C. This week I saw on Facebook that a market, butcher's market in Newport, Pennsylvania, near where I grew up had corn available for sale. Um, even though it's the beginning of July, I thought that's kind of early, but, um, but we have a three day weekend. And so with nothing else on our schedule and a Friday holiday and a three day weekend, we drove two and a half hours to Newport We got six dozen ears of corn, um, and we are today. I, we're gonna we're gonna blanch it and cut it off just like Grandma did, and we're gonna put it in bags. And we're gonna freeze it so that in the winter we can go to the freezer and we can pull out a little bit of summer. One of my fondest memories is one that I want to share today, and that is of doing corn. We called it doing corn, and I don't know why that's what we called it, but I'm talking about sweet corn, uh, the kind that you find in the grocery store and people stand around a big box and husk it in the grocery store, which I don't understand. Um, but in any case, my dad planted um, a number of rows of sweet corn right across the road from our house and it was usually ready for harvest in like late July, early August. We assembled a group of people to help and we would get up really early in the morning because it was August and so it was hot and humid and buggy. And um, usually there were some, a couple of teenage boys that she would invite to help and my grandma was always there and everybody had a different role. Um, the guys, and I did this a couple of times too, would, we would put on long sleeve shirts, douse ourselves in bug spray, and go into the rows of corn and pick the corn. And there are ways to tell when it's, when it's ready. You, you, um, you touch the end to make sure that, that the, the kernels have filled out the ear. And um, we would pick the corn, throw it into wagons and, uh, and wheelbarrows and bring it across the road. And then there would be other people husking it on the porch. And once it was husked, it would go straight into boiling water to be blanched for just a few minutes and then plunged into a cold ice water bath. And that was often my job. I would have to transfer the corn from the first icy bath into the second icy bath. We had a double sink um, until it was cool enough to cut the kernels off the ear. Cutting the kernels off the ear was Grandma Lasha's job. Nobody else was permitted to cut the kernels off the ear. I used to love to watch her do it. She would sit with a bowl on her lap and we would bring her the ears and she would slice and it comes corn comes off the cob in strips like intact strips of kernels all together and we would sometimes reach in and sneak one and she would shush us away and when i go to a farm market now and i see a big stack of corn i will i will always peel a little i go like this i just check the end I just peel it down a little bit because I want to make sure that the kernels fill out the ear. And, uh, and then I'll find someone and say, when was this corn picked? Uh, because if the answer is anything more than, you know, a day ago, it's just not good enough because I grew up with corn straight off the stalk and, uh, and into the pot. the corn in boiling water just to blanch it for about three minutes. Then we're gonna pull it out and give it an ice bath so that it cools off. part that was excruciating when I was a kid because it was August 
on the farm. We didn't have air conditioning and my mom would get out these huge, like bigger pots than this, big old like kettles. Um, and the kitchen would just be all steaming. And uh, my favorite job was to put the corn into the ice water bath because I could get a little bit cooler that way. When the grocery stores start advertising fresh corn, fresh corn um, in the spring around here, I live in Maryland now, and when they start advertising it, I know that it's being shipped up from somewhere in the South, um, which means it's at least several days old, if not more. And I know that the varieties of corn um, have been bred to be a little more stable once they're off the stock than they were 40 some years ago when I was a kid. Um, nevertheless, I think freshness still matters. And you can actually tell, I will sometimes also stick a thumbnail. I will sometimes stick a, stick a fingernail or a thumbnail right into a kernel. And if it squirts, if it's, you know, you can tell if it's tender or not. Um, and if it's not tender, there's no reason. Um, I will never buy corn that is pre-shucked and, and the ends are chopped off and it's packaged in, uh, on a styrofoam tray and wrapped in, in plastic. That stuff has been mutilated. It's, it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. And I won't buy frozen corn on the cob. I have, I have no need for that. So it, they just have to be in long enough to have a nice, bright, vivid yellow color. You can just kind of tell. Only needs about three minutes when it's good fresh corn, which I know this is. Because I know Stacy picks her corn in the morning. That's why I drove to Pennsylvania to get it. Now we're going straight into the ice bath with this. You blanch the corn for about three minutes. You have to plunge it right into an icy water bath to stop it from cooking. Um, and to cool it off enough so you can cut it off the cob. The best part about working the ice water bath was that sweat would be rolling down your back and then you would put your hands in the ice water and your hands would be numb. It was like a weird contrast. Now it's time to cut the corn off the ears. And you cut it into a bowl. And I don't remember, I used to watch grandma do this and I don't remember, I think she cut it tip to end but what she did do was she would put the she had the bowl on her lap and she always had a really big bowl and then she would just slice down away from her like this and turn it you can kind of tell when you're getting you want it to be deep enough to get the whole kernel but you don't want to get any of the cob and then here's I'm going to show you the best part you ready there's two best parts actually. Then you uh, you turn the cob the other way and you run. <laughs> it splashes, but you run the knife down it and it gets like all the juicy corn milk. That's the one best part. The other best part is look at these. The corn comes off in these little contiguous chunks and they're I'm gonna just like eating candy to a farm kid I guess I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the knife that I'm using pioneer seed corn was a brand of corn that you know the farmers planted and I don't even know if that was a sweet corn seed or field corn or whatever but anyway they had these giveaway knives that the seed sales guys would give to the farmers and my mom loved them and kind of hoarded them and um it just it's a you know it's a dumb little giveaway knife but it's the best thing it's it's really sharp and it's got a very thin blade so it's the best thing for cutting off um for cutting off corn and years later when she was wintering in Florida with her then husband, um, she they were invited to some guy's house for dinner and learned that the, they were formerly farmers from Iowa or Nebraska or someplace. And uh, the guy whipped out a pioneer seed corn knife and my mom went nuts about it. So that is the legend of the pioneer knife. 
This is one of those times uh, at, in my adult life when I feel like I'm channeling my grandma, one or the other of them. In particular, I think of Grandma Lash because she was the one who, she was, I jokingly have referred to her as she who cuts the corn because she was the only one who was allowed to cut the corn. And um, I used to watch her and I used to think, I was a little girl and I used to think, man, someday I'll be able to cut the corn. <laughs> And today I did, and, uh, and my hands are sicky uh, to prove it. But, um, but it's a good thing to do. It makes me feel like, um, it makes me feel a little bit like that farm girl I used to be, which is kind of fun too. Um, and the corn is to die for. So Butcher's Farm Market in Newport, Pennsylvania is where you go to get your corn. Stacy and her crew do a great job. Um, and I'm thrilled about this. And I've been happy to share my story of corn with you. Thanks for watching. Um, please like and subscribe and share this video with a friend. And if you have stories about uh, doing corn in Pennsylvania or wherever you've done it, please leave them in the comments below or leave a comment at our Facebook page, which is at more must be better. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.